I'm James Turk. I'm a director of the Gold Money Foundation. I'm here in lovely Sydney, Australia with best-selling author and founder of Casey Research, Doug Casey. Doug, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. As with you, Jim. Um, we're both speaking here in Sydney at the Minds and Money Conference. Uh, I'd like to start out, uh, if you could just sort of summarize some of the conclusions and thoughts that you had in your presentation this morning. Well, I've actually got my notes in my pocket, but it would be inappropriate for me to read from my notes <laughs> in this interview. Uh, essentially, what I told these people, uh, as I put my thoughts together to do my speech, I didn't really know which way I was going to go, but they asked me to answer several questions. And as I addressed the questions that the promoters of the show wanted me to answer, uh, I was forced to crystallize my thoughts. And um, I think that the mining business as a whole is very problematical. I've always felt somewhat sheepish saying that uh, I'm around the mining business because people think you're stupid. I mean, it's a 19th century choo-choo train business where you're moving dirt uh, when, at a time when everybody else is developing magic technologies and so forth. Um, and it's a tough business because um, people have been looking for minerals forever and most of the big deposits, rich deposits of everything have mostly been discovered. And increasingly we have to go to larger and larger lower and lower grade ore bodies which um, become more and more problematical because uh, these NGOs and so forth hate to see you raping the earth. So it's a terrible business, uh, actually. And especially getting into the business now after commodity prices have been in a 10-year boom. I, I'd rather buy anything cheap than after a 10-year bull market. So anyway, I was kind of the wet blanket uh, on, with all these mining guys who were saying how we're all going to become, if not millionaires, maybe billionaires. And I was saying, you know what? We've had a good long party already. Maybe we should chill it a little bit. So that was the essence of what I said. Um, despite all of the issues, the political uh, issues, the environmental issues, the NGOs and everything else, you still think there's a boom in the mining stocks coming? I do, because I've been involved in this sector since 1971, really. And in that time, I've seen more than a half a dozen real booms where the market as a whole for junior mining stocks has gone up roughly a thousand percent and subsequently fallen roughly 95 percent. They fall more than they go up because most of them are intrinsically worthless, these stocks. Uh, and I think with the governments all around the world creating trillions of currency units in a futile attempt to prop up the old economy, uh, some of those trillions of currency units are going to find their way into commodities, particularly gold, and some of that money is going to find its way into a, these junior mining companies, uh, which are actually the most volatile securities on the face of the earth, more volatile than the internet stocks ever were. So I think there's an excellent chance Notwithstanding the fact that mining is a lousy business, I think there's an excellent chance that we're going to see a real bubble in these mining stocks, and it could be the biggest one ever. Now, do you mean all mining stocks, or do you mean just the juniors? When you say juniors, how do you define that? Are, are the smaller producers or just the pre-production companies? Well, you got, we, as you recognize, uh, first of all, there's about 5,000 so-called mining companies in the world more or less, that's, that's a rough number. 90% uh, of those only have gold or nickel or silver, or whatever they're supposed to be going after. The only gold they have is printed on the front of their share certificates. Uh, they don't have any intrinsic value at all. With uh, very little prospect of ever finding gold or nickel or whatever. Yeah, very, very little intrinsic prospect, very little prospect of doing that. So. You narrow it down, so maybe you've got 500 comp countries, companies out of the 5,000 that are worth investigating further. Um, at this stage, though, I don't want companies that are just a hope and a dream and a promotion. I don't want a company 
that, as Mark Twain says, is a hole in the ground with a liar at the entrance, which is how he defined a gold mine. I'm looking for companies that have uh, an actual deposit that you can see is possibly economic, that the people running it are solid and have track records and are proven commodities. That rules out most of the remaining 500. That are adequately financed, rules out more of them. Uh, that are in the right political jurisdiction, because of course, government is the major enemy of all creative enterprise, but mining in particular. Uh, so you put these things through a screen, and those are the companies that I want to own, and I think will be the biggest beneficiaries of what I hope is uh, this bubble. Yeah.